In this problem, we have an infinite series, and we're being asked to determine if it converges or diverges. So there are two ways to do this problem. First, let's do it using what's called the alternating series test. So solution one. So when you're using the alternating series test, the first thing you want to do is identify the non-alternating part. That's the part without the negative one to the n. So if you rewrite this as the sum, from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 1 over e to the n, you can easily identify the non-alternating part. It's this part here. It's the part without the negative 1 to the n. So the first thing you typically do is identify that. The next thing is you just go through the motions. There's two steps. The first step is to take the limit as n goes to infinity of your non-alternating part. So you can see that this limit will be zero, and that's because the bottom is getting really, really big as n gets big. So the fraction becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. The second step is to just notice that this is non-increasing. In other words, when n gets big, this gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's not just gonna get like small, big, small, big. It's just going straight down. So is non-increasing. Non-increasing means decreasing or staying the same. So both of these conditions check. So then you would just say, so converges by the alternating series test. That's it. Now, if the first condition fails, what you can do is you can go back and use what's called the nth term test to show divergence. Um, you can never say diverges by the alternating series test. The alternating series test only shows convergence. All right, let me show you the other solution that I was thinking of initially. So solution two, this is the way I would do it, is I would notice that you can write this as follows. Let me do it over here. You can write your infinite sum using properties of exponents like this, negative one over e to the n, right? Because this is to the n and this is to the n, so you can just use properties of exponents to write it like this. You say, well, how is that helpful? Well, set r equal to negative 1 over e. Then the absolute value of r is equal to 1 over e, which is less than 1, because e is like 2.78 or something. So this is less than 1. So our series converges by the, the one and only geometric series test. Boom. So much easier solution is to use the geometric series test and notice that r is less than one in absolute value, so you have actual convergence. So two different ways to do the problem, and I'm sure there's more ways, but this was my first instinct, uh, geometric series. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there who is trying to learn some calculus. Good luck and take care.